Listen to Savage's comments during his interview with Donald Trump on World Net Daily back in a minute. Insult after another, one violation of the Constitution after another. Ram rotting laws down our throats with his little Blackberry, which you go into a museum of, I can't say it, it's a family show. Obama's Blackberry belongs in a, a house of horrors, the instrument used to destroy a nation. If somebody has a museum anywhere on earth that holds some of the torture devices through the centuries or some of the most evil devices ever used in history, I would say that Obama's Blackberry belongs in such a museum. But putting that aside, Tell me what, tell me one, one thing that could have happened that's even worse for the future of this country than what happened over the weekend with the passing of Scalia under suspicious circumstances. Tell me what could have been worse. I'd like to know. Tell me what could have been worse. Nothing. Nothing. Because if he gets control of that Supreme Court, you may as well pack your bags and move where there's nowhere to move. It's the end of the world. You heard me. It's the end of the world, not the end of America, the end of the world. If you take a look at the fanatics on the Supreme Court like Ruth Bader Ginsburg and you look at her, her background as, ch as chief counsel for the ACLU, you will see where this country will go, right into the toilet bowl. Nothing worse could have happened. Therefore, we have every obligation to ask ourselves, why would a judge travel to such a remote location for a vacation alone? That's number one. Number two, who paid for the trip? Number three, who was there with him? I mean, these, these are important questions that any detective would ask if such a man of such a high position disappears, or dies rather, excuse me. You ask these questions right away. You tape off the room. You don't let some crackpot judge go in there. There's no coroner. You've got to secure, secure the perimeter of the room. You bring in a forensic team from the FBI. Where is the FBI? Answer, in the back pocket of Barry Obama's Blackberry Union. That's where it is. It's in the back pocket where he keeps the Blackberry, closest to the part of the body he uses. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE. Savage. We are talking about the mysterious death of Justice Antonin Scalia. News just came out that the, the President of the United States of America has just announced he will not attend the funeral of Justice Scalia, he will go golfing instead. He may as well go to the funeral and you know what on his grave. You talk about an evil, low life. You talk a man, about a man with no class. Did you hear the news? Oh, you didn't hear that news about your president? The lowest form of president ever, ever to invade the White House, ever to have destroyed everything decent in this country. Listen to what I just, he won't even go to the funeral. Did you hear about this? Listen to the double talker, a man who should face tri a trial, the uh, spokesmouth. He's a disgrace that Ernst. Ernst is like a, 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 a low-level Goebbels. Listen to clip number 23. Can you rule out him going golfing on Saturday instead of the funeral? Uh, I don't have a sense of what the president's plans are uh, for Saturday. Uh, the president obviously... Um, uh, All right, Ernst the liar, I it's double important. talk this morning, sounded like the fool he is. But we just learned, news just came out, that the President of the United States will not attend the funeral. She said, big deal. Why should he attend the funeral of a right-wing nut? That's how the left thinks. The illegitimate, verminous left thinks that way. They're, they're just garbage. Now, well, now you know why Justice Roberts voted on Obamacare. They probably sent him a pillow in the mail. I mean, a pillow pillowcase. He had a shoulder ailment from a few days earlier that turned into a heart attack. There are so many deaths. You know, you say, oh, and there's nothing about this at all. Move on. There's nothing to see here. There's nothing to see here. The man was 79. He was obese. And he died of a heart attack. Well, he didn't die of a heart attack. They changed that, idiots. That's number two. And if he was in such bad shape, why did he fly to this remote, vill this remote uh, ranch in Texas? So don't, don't buy the, the story, please. What else is in the news? He was he's seen a doctor a few days before. And by the way, being a Supreme Court justice is not such a high-stress job. My job is much more highly stressed than being a Supreme Court justice, incidentally. They have a chance to review, analyze, revise. 
take, take a text and this. It's an easy job. What are you talking about? It's a plum job. What's so hard about being a Supreme Court justice? You want to talk tightrope? This is tightrope. There's no harder mental job in the world than the one I have. Three hours a day. So don't tell me about the high stress job. That's why he died. Everything that you have to understand here, there's something suspicious about this. An autopsy would silence all the critics. That's all. An autopsy would silence me and everyone else. Why don't we just put it behind us? You're telling me that there are no murderous psychopaths in this country? You're telling me that there are no murderous psychopaths in the highest offices, in the highest places in this country? Are you crazy? Let me say this to you off the top. All people who run for office have a streak of insanity in them. That's to begin with. No normal man would want to be a politician. I don't care what side of the aisle they're on. Anyone who seeks a high political position has a psychopathic streak in them, a sociopathic streak in them. What, what normal person would want that except someone who's power mad? It's an addictive drug to people in, in power, right? I still say, even if it's logical to you, that an old man, almost 80, who was a little obese, who dies in his sleep after a day of hunting, drinking, and gorging our rich food, still in all, an autopsy should have been done. His death was wrapped up too quickly. That's all. His death was wrapped up too quickly. The pillow, of course, was a big deal. And they've changed that story a hundred times. What can I say to you? There's so many things at stake right now. And I think that people have a right to the answer. Especially when you have such a creep in the White House. Did I just say that? Yes. I think he's the... I can't say it because it's, it's going to diminish my case. I'll tell you what, I'll do it in a very classy way. Go and read Stop the Coming Civil War, 300 and some odd pages with references because I have a literary and scholastic background. Go read Government Zero before you open your big trap. And everything that I say about this monster in the White House is verified in every chapter, chapter and verse. Everything he has done, no borders, no language, no culture. Everything that the monster will do if he puts a, a left-wing fanatic probably from Harvard on there. I love, what call, call, I love who's giving interviews now. Lawrence Tribe. Lawrence Tribe, big expert from Harvard. The man who has dreamed of being on the Supreme Court since he was an infant. Lawrence Tribe, from the day he started drinking seltzer on the table with Woody Allen in Brooklyn. He thought he'd be on the Supreme Court. His mother patted him on the head. You're such a brilliant boy. You'll go to law school. A, man, a boy like you can go anywhere you want. Larry, you're so smart. You'll be on the Supreme Court one day. So now they're interviewing the guy who hopes Obama will appoint them for his opinion on the Supreme Court situation. You hear the, the, the government media complex? You know, in 1998, the most brilliant speech of our lifetime was given on the cozy relationship between the government and the media by an unknown man. And the speech was entitled before the Commonwealth Club in San Francisco, Beware the Government Media Complex. It's a very important speech that's been buried. It was never run on C-SPAN, a wholly owned arm of the government media complex. And I am the man who gave the speech before the Commonwealth Club. Very important, seminal. That same man was granted the Freedom of Speech Award by the Talkers Magazine. That same man was then banned from entering Britain for espousing what is common sense, and as the days turn... He was prophetic in what he said about Britain. And here I am speaking to you today about this issue, not for fun. And I would say that I'm doing so at some risk to myself without glorifying or magnifying the foolishness of what I am doing. It would be much safer to talk about Cruz and Trump, much safer to talk about rhinos, much safer to talk about the election than it would be to talk about this. So ask yourself why I'm doing it. Oh, why am I doing it? I'm doing it for one reason only. You have the answer to that, right? You all, you all have the right answer, except that you're always wrong. I'm doing it because there's only one reason for talk radio, aside from entertaining you when, when entertainment is the order of the day, and that is when a nation's future hangs in the balance like a loose tooth. People have to stand up and be counted, and if it starts with one or two people, it could become 10 or 20 people, 
It could become 100 or 200 people. Or if we have no press in America, as I fear, we are praying that some foreign press reporters go to that town in Texas and try to interview a Justice Cinderella uh, Guevara and see what you get. Start poking around the hotel. Start poking around. You want to be a real reporter in America? Stop covering people who trip on their dresses on Sunset Boulevard. You want to be a real reporter? Stop covering the vermin from the sewer pipe of Hollywood. Stop covering the sewer pipe of Hollywood and the garbage that flows out of it and start covering the most important story of our time. A Supreme Court justice who was the only link between one side of the aisle and another dies suddenly in a strange resort a few months before an election and you don't see that as a story? Then you should hang up your shingle and quit the business of being a newspaper reporter because you're not. Your job. You have only one job if you're in the newspaper business, or the press, or Fox News, or CBS, or you carry around a camera. You have only one job, and that's to be a thorn in the side of the political class, or they'll turn us into slaves. That's your job. You're not supposed to be a water carrier for them, like Josh Ernst. You're not supposed to be someone who just trumpets what they tell you. Your job is to question, question, question. That's your job. There's not a prize in the land that's worthy of a reporter today. They're all invented. They're fake. Pulitzer Prize. For what? Covering a story on the danger of, of sugar? A story on the danger of uh, sugar? Or the large size soft drink in New York City? Or a cigarette? That's their idea. That's their idea of giving each other awards. This is a story worthy of investigation. And it would have taken only an, an autopsy, but it's not too late. Oh, no, no, it's not like, to, even though the bodily fluids were flushed down the toilet already, as we were told yesterday, haven't you seen enough CSI shows on television? You know what's amazing to me? I'm a man who loves movies, and I love television shows. And I know that people, uh, are particularly on the liberal side, are very cinematic in their viewing habits. They love Martin Scorsese. They love all of those kind of movies, as I do. They watch these shows and movies all the time. If this was a movie, tell me how the plot would play out. You, you, you couldn't, you tune in segment after segment. So segment two is this, the cover-up from the press. Segment three, segment four. And you tune in to see how it evolves, right? Well, why is the story ending? Because those who control the government media complex have decided that it's a two-chapter a two story. Part one and part two, there's no part three. Last night I was watching a new series called Vinyl, for example. I didn't know who produced it, but I was, it was about the record industry on HBO in the 1970s. I just caught it by accident. I'd heard nothing about it. But as I watched it, I saw it was getting better and better and better. I said, every scene I'm looking at is better than the one before. It's cinematically, music, lighting. I said, boy, this is good. So I call my friend Jack, who knows more TV than I do. He says, well, didn't you know it was produced, directed by Scorsese and written by Mick Jagger? I said, you're kidding me. I said, I, I couldn't understand why it was so good. So now imagine... This story told by a great writer, written by a great writer, and directed by Martin Scorsese. Tell me how it would play out. What would be, what would be the next scene? What's the next scene now? The story wouldn't end here, would it? Robert, would the story end now? And we're on, move on, there's nothing to see here because a, a bunch of government hacks say he's a fat old man who dropped dead in his sleep. There's nothing to see here. That's not how the story ends. Okay, now I need to have the callers tune in here rick in florida on wftw radio go ahead you're the first up this hour what's your comment yeah mike the thing that really stinks about the scalia case here is that uh, local law enforcement was completely shut out of this case uh, what should have happened in the normal circumstances local law enforcement should have been contacted first they would have come to the ranch secured the scene and coordinated with the feds they would have made sure that the uh, texas law was followed which was that an autopsy had to be performed and that an investigation had to be conducted. Why was local and law enforcement shut out? I would submit. Well, tell, well, tell the audience who was used instead of local enforcement. It was the U.S. Marshals. Who was the U.S. Marshal? He was appointed by Obama in 2010. Does anyone know that? Exactly right. And uh, this reminds me of what happened in the Vince Foster case where they called the Park Police in to find the body. So, again, uh, in this case, the Clintons controlled the whole investigation and the whole thing was shut down. So here we have the uh, here we have the template. Obama's doing the same thing that Clinton's did with the Foster thing. They're just shutting everything down. 